COPV. This is quickly becoming a significant keyword when discussing Starship at this stage of its development. Yes, it is the very component responsible for the recent Ship 36 incident. And it is not the first time this part has been brought up during the long and complex journey of Starship's evolution. So why does SpaceX continue to face challenges with this component? And more importantly, what steps might they take to fix it moving forward? Let us explore the answers on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Starship is without a doubt one of the most unique and complex rockets in the world. It is made of many intricate parts and systems, all of which must work in perfect coordination. Because of this complexity, maintaining flawless performance across every flight is incredibly difficult. Over time, we have seen different systems run into issues, from engines and flaps to fuel tanks. Most recently, another system has entered the spotlight, the COPV. COPV stands for Composite Overwrapped Pressure Vessel. It is a lightweight, high-pressure container typically made of aluminum and wrapped in a carbon fiber composite. Its role is to store gases such as nitrogen or helium, which are used to pressurize different parts of the rocket. On Starship, the COPVs are located inside the payload section, or nose cone, and help support critical operations like nitrogen purging and engine spin start procedures. Their lightweight design is key to maintaining performance, which is why after Flight 9, several COPVs were seen washed up along the beach. However, despite their advantages, COPVs are quite complex and vulnerable to failure under extreme conditions. On X, Elon Musk explained, Preliminary data suggests that a nitrogen COPV in the payload bay failed before its proof pressure. It appears that during the recent test, the internal pressure exceeded the container's limits, causing the COPV to rupture. The resulting force was powerful enough to blow a hole through the windward side of the vehicle and damage key structures, including fuel lines and the forward dome. This allowed fuel to leak out, ignite, and ultimately cause the massive explosion that destroyed Ship 36. What makes the situation even more challenging is that this appears to be an entirely new failure mode. Musk also said, if further investigation confirms that this is what happened, it is the first time ever for this design. SpaceX later confirmed in their official update, there is no commonality between the COPVs used on Starship and SpaceX's Falcon rockets. That clarification is important, especially considering that Falcon 9 had its own COPV-related issues during the CRS-7 mission in 2015 and the Amos-6 mission in 2016. So the question now is, why has the COPV become a recurring issue in SpaceX's Starship development? To begin with, one of the primary reasons lies in the inherent complexity of COPV design, especially when it comes to composite materials. These vessels are engineered to hold extremely high-pressure gases, and that requires intricate layers of composite wrapping. When manufacturing or handling is not flawless, this complexity can introduce a range of vulnerabilities. For instance, small flaws such as improper liner bonding, uneven fiber application, or imperfections during the winding process can compromise the vessel's structural integrity. In some cases, the composite layers can warp under stress, creating pockets that may trap liquid oxygen or pressurized gas. This situation can become highly volatile and, under the right conditions, may lead to catastrophic failure. The second contributing factor is the significant difference between the COPVs used in Starship and those used in other vehicles, including SpaceX's Falcon 9. SpaceX and Musk have repeatedly emphasized that Starship's systems are unique. Given that Starship is the largest and most powerful rocket ever built, the pressure and thermal loads are vastly different from those of Falcon 9. Starship must handle greater engine thrust, larger propellant volumes, and stronger structural vibrations, which create harsher environments for all components, especially COPVs. Another major challenge stems from Starship's use of cryogenic fuels. Unlike Falcon 9, which uses a combination of liquid oxygen and kerosene, or RP-1, Starship uses both liquid oxygen and liquid methane, both of which must be kept at extremely low temperatures. This further stresses the composite materials of COPVs, increasing the likelihood of cold-induced brittleness, 
delamination, or cracking, all of which could lead to failure under pressure. More critically, Starship is designed for full reusability and long-duration missions, such as in-space refueling, lunar landings, and even Mars colonization. That means every component, including the COPVs, must be capable of enduring multiple cycles of pressure, temperature variation, and physical stress. This demand for durability and reusability introduces a new layer of engineering challenges that are very different from those faced with Falcon 9. Elon Musk has even pointed out that the recent incident on Ship 36 is the first time a failure has occurred with this specific COPV design. This makes it clear that although Falcon 9 experienced two major COPV-related issues in 2015 and 2016, the knowledge from those events is not directly transferable to Starship. Starship's size, mission objectives, and operational environment make it a different kind of vehicle altogether. Therefore, new solutions and testing regimes are needed. Beyond the technical pressure, there is also significant time pressure. SpaceX's rapid development approach means that Starship is being built and tested in fast cycles, often with limited time between design, construction, and launch attempts. SpaceX accepts that failure is part of the process and uses data from each test to improve future designs. However, this fast pace can also mean that problems emerge before previous issues are fully understood or resolved. In 2025 alone, Starship has already encountered multiple multiple challenges, including harmonic vibrations, unexpected propellant mixing, loss of vehicle control during flight, and now the COPV failure. While this iterative development method can produce results faster, it also exposes the system to a higher risk of unexpected failures. Each flight is intended to build on lessons from the last, but with the pace accelerating, the risk of skipping over important insights also increases. Moreover, Starship is under additional pressure to achieve extremely ambitious goals. It is not just another rocket, it is the backbone of future missions involving two stage landings, in-orbit refueling, and participation in NASA's Artemis program and Mars colonization plans. These goals force aggressive timelines and sometimes lead to shortcuts in testing or refinement. The need for fast progress can mean some parts like COPVs are not stress-tested under the full range of conditions they will encounter during flight. Another contributing factor is the gap between test conditions and actual flight conditions. Some aerospace experts have suggested that Starship's integrated testing process may be insufficient to identify certain failure points. Since components like COPVs may pass bench testing but fail under full stack, cryogenic, or vibration-loaded conditions, issues might go undetected until they cause major incidents. A more isolated and rigorous testing campaign could possibly have caught the COPV flaw that doomed S-36. It is also important to remember that Starship is still a developmental vehicle. NASA does not yet have the same oversight over its COPV systems as it does for Falcon 9 missions. This means that SpaceX largely manages Starship's component testing and quality control internally. Given that, some theorize that the COPVs on recent prototypes may not have been installed or secured correctly, increasing the risk of mechanical failure during operations. Furthermore, locating the COPVs in the nose cone, near pressurized fuel lines, only adds to the risk. If one fails, it could trigger a chain of reaction could trigger a chain reaction affecting multiple systems at once. There may be even more underlying factors yet to be revealed. If you have any thoughts or additional ideas on why Starship's COPV system continues to be a challenge, feel free to share them in the comments section down below. Then, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to continue following the ongoing journey of SpaceX's most ambitious project. Now, once the root causes of the incident are identified, the next crucial step will be determining potential solutions and implementing the necessary corrective actions. The first and perhaps most significant solution is to thoroughly investigate and possibly redesign the COPV system. This will depend heavily on the findings of the ongoing investigation. If a fundamental flaw is discovered, SpaceX may need to completely overhaul the current COPV design. This could involve reinforcing the outer casing, improving structural integrity, or even adjusting the internal layout. Special attention will need to be given to the liner joints, which might be upgraded to ensure they can handle repeated stress without compromising durability or reliability. The second step involves enhancing the testing process itself. SpaceX will likely need to expand its test protocols, incorporating both isolated and integrated evaluations of the COPV system. Testing standards should be increased to push the limits of 
pressure and thermal conditions in order to detect vulnerabilities early. Alongside this, quality control procedures must be tightened across every stage of production, from design and manufacturing to installation and system verification. Personnel involved in these stages may also require updated training, which could be implemented during the downtime while the Massey test site undergoes cleanup and repair. With S-36 now lost, S-37 is expected to be next in line, and its COPV system will be closely scrutinized while it remains inside Mega Bay 2. Finally, SpaceX may explore alternative technologies to reduce reliance on the COPV system altogether. On the COPV system altogether. One option could be to utilize engine-supplied air for certain pressurization tasks, potentially lowering the operational demands placed on the COPVs. However, this would introduce new engineering challenges, including the design and integration of a supporting system, which may add complexity to the overall architecture. It can be said that even a a single incident involving one part of Starship is enough to reveal much about the challenges SpaceX still faces. Starship, a rocket widely considered to be the future of the aerospace industry, remains a highly complex and ambitious system. This complexity makes it extremely difficult for even its creators to maintain complete control over every aspect of its development. The recent issue involving the COPV stands out as a powerful example of the broader challenges within the Starship program. This component, while seemingly minor, has emerged as a focal point for both technical analysis and potential design improvements. In the weeks and months ahead, the COPV will likely receive heightened attention as engineers assess failure points and begin implementing more robust solutions. If SpaceX can overcome this setback, it'll position the company for an even stronger return, pushing toward its long-term goals of reaching the moon, Mars, and beyond. So, let us see how SpaceX responds in the days ahead. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.